Hey everyone, this video is for 9.5 day 1, completing the square. We're going to look at this lesson for two days rather than one in hopes that we can master this material. The process is a little bit more involved, so that's why we're taking two days rather than one. Our objective for both days is that we can solve quadratic equations by completing the square. Let's look at the first example. We have x squared plus 8x. We're going to look at a visual diagram to help us figure this out. We need to complete the square. Let's look at the first diagram. We have x squared and 8 1x's written out. We're going to rearrange this diagram and still have the same number of tiles, but in a different format. And you can see that a square is being formed because the dimensions are the same. The length and the width are both x and 4. You can see there either x plus 4 is the dimensions of both the length and the width. Now you can see this blank space right here. What we need to do to figure out what goes in this blank space is complete the square. So this is your first blank on your note sheet, complete the square. How many tiles do we need to complete the square? The way that you figure this out is you add 4 squared or 16 1 tiles. Now where did that number come from? Well that 4 came from the dimensions on both sides how many x's there were. So there were 4 here and 4 here, so when you square that you get 16. And you can see in this diagram that 16 1 tiles fit perfectly. And that number completes the square. So now looking down here, that 16 is the number that we add to complete that square. And the nice thing is that this is a perfect square trinomial. You can recall this from last chapter. When we have a perfect square trinomial and we make the x, both numbers on, on the sides of the x are the same number. You'll see right here, 4 works for both the sides of the x. So you will see more in depth what that means in just a moment. To change x squared plus bx into a perfect square trinomial, what we need to do is add b over 2 squared to the quadratic x squared plus bx. So the thing you want to do is look at whatever number is in the b spot. That number you're going to immediately divide by 2 and then square it. So next blank is whatever number is in the b position, divide that number by 2 and then square it. So a basic example of this, if that number was, for instance, 6, we had a x squared plus 6x. We would take that b value, which is 6, divide that by 2, and square it. Well, dividing by 2, that gives us 3. 3 squared is 9. And then we get the perfect square trinomial of 8x squared plus 6x plus 9. We can take the x method, put the 9 up here, put the 6 down here. What numbers work? Well, 3 and 3. When you multiply 3 and 3, you get 9. When you add 3 and 3, you get 6. So you can see we're getting a perfect square trinomial. I'll stop there because um, I'm getting excited about this and we will look at the jingle now for this method. So this is going to be really helpful and I'm hoping that this sticks for you. This is how the jingle goes. You half it, you square it, and you add it to both sides. You half it and you square it and you add it to both sides. What does this mean? Well, the first thing that you do is you take the b term and you divide by 2. That's what it means to half it. Then you take that value and you square it. I just showed you that in the previous slide. And then the last thing that you have to do is add that number to both sides of the equation. The reason why you do this is because you must keep the equation equal on both sides. It's like a balanced scale. If you do it to one side, you must do it to the other. And I think you already know that. Then after you do this part right here, you finish by using the square root method. And I will show you how that works. And you're going to rewrite that value as a perfect square. Then you're going to take the square root of both sides. That is how you undo the square value up there in the exponent. Remember when you square root something, you must take in consideration the positive and negative answer. And then you solve for x. So here's the jingle. Feel free to pause here if you need to write this down um, in the blank space on your note sheet. And last thing I'd like to do is give credit to Moo Moo Math on YouTube. I found this jingle on there and I am hoping that it's helpful for you. 
let's take a look at our first example. We don't have to do the whole process here. They're actually taking us um, through it step by step. So the first thing that we have to do in this example, actually the only thing is, recognize what the A, B, and C values are. Okay, so the A value is the number in front of the X squared, the B value, and then the C we don't know. The whole point of this example is to figure out what the C value is. That A value is 1, and the B value is negative 16. So let's go back through the jingle. The first thing you do is you recognize the B value is negative 16. The number that you must add to this quadratic is you have to half it. So the first thing you do is you take the negative 16 and divide it by 2. You half it, you square it, and then you add it to both sides. So the number inside the parentheses is negative 8. When you square it, you get 64. So that means the C value must be 64. And that's as far as we have to go in the first example. In example 2, we actually have to solve this equation by using the completing the square method. So feel free to pause throughout this part uh, if you get overwhelmed or need, need me to slow down. To solve an equation in this form, you first have to subtract the C value, which is this number, to the other side in order to make room for whatever number you are completing the square with. So I'm going to rewrite the given quadratic. Okay, first step is subtract that number to the other side to make a blank space. So now we have x squared minus 14x, blank space equals negative 16. Now we have to figure out what number are we adding to both sides. This is the completing the square method. So I'm going to do this on the side. The b value is negative 14. That is the number in front of the x. So let's go through the jingle. You half it, take that number, divide by 2. You square it, and then we're going to add to both sides. This number is negative 7 squared, and that equals 49. So what we're going to do is add 49 to both sides. Remember, you must add that number to both sides in order to keep it an equation. Otherwise, it is not an equation anymore. Now we're ready for the x method. Technically, you could skip this if you know how to do this in your head, but I'm going to show you just because this is how we learned it last chapter. So you take the 49 and you take the negative 14 and put it in their spots. What numbers work? Well, the number is going to be the same thing on both sides. And you find out that negative 7 and negative 7 work because when you multiply them, you get 49, and when you add them, you get negative 14. So now we can go back to our quadratic and rewrite this as x minus 7 times x minus 7. And the other side, we might as well combine like terms and get 33. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a second, a x minus 7 twice, can we just rewrite that as x minus 7 squared? And yes, you are correct. So now we're getting pretty close to the answer. Do you see that little 2 up there in the exponent? That means that x minus 7 is squared. In order to undo, or inverse operation, that little 2 up there, you have to take the square root of both sides. Square root both sides. When you take the square root of something squared, that cancels out. So now all we have left on the left side is x minus 7. Now please take note that when you take the square root of a number, you have to do the plus or minus in front of that number. So I'm going to write plus or minus square root of 33. The reason why, I think we talked about this before, <clears throat> you have to account for the positive and negative version of that number. So that's why we put that there. Now we actually want to find the solutions. So I'm going to be using squiggly equals here because we're rounding a bit. When you type this into the calculator, you find out it's about 5.74. Last thing, well, when you have a plus or minus, that means there's going to be two answers. So I'm going to write x minus 7 equals 5.74 or x minus 7 equals negative 5.74. That's what that plus or minus means. One more step and then we're at our answer. Add 7 to both sides. x equals 12.74 and then add 7 to both sides over here and you get or x equals 1.26. So you find out those two numbers work 
for the given quadratic. That completes today's lesson. Feel free to try the lesson check that corresponds with day one material. Otherwise, if you'd like to wait until we do problems like this together during class, you can do that. Just make sure you have um, gone over this lesson and thoroughly understand it. Feel free to rewind, and I will see you very soon.